The most important thing in business is honesty, integrity, hard work, family. Never forgetting where we came from. Do you are what you are in this world. That's either one or two things. Either you're somebody, or you're nobody. What happened with Ezra? Still problems? <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I left it for my wife. Is it already oh, that cold in uh, Canada? You're wearing uh, the... Yeah, yeah, the Mayone, so yeah. Uh, yeah, in the morning, you know what? It was uh, 10 degrees. Wow. <laughs> you, you, how is it? It's still hot? No, here it's still hot. Okay. I haven't uh, put this sweater on yet. Yeah, now we're at 20 degrees, but the morning is 10 degrees, you know. And then I was in the shade. I went for lunch. I just wanted to go for a walk for two minutes. I was freezing. My head was freezing, you know. <laughs> ah, you so, missed yeah. the hair. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. I need to wear a hat everywhere I go now. And you, nice fresh haircut. Yeah. Tomorrow I have to go to a wedding, so I, I ah. felt it was appropriate. Right. <laughs> but That's I good. already miss my hair. You know, I was uh, sorry because I thought uh, I had the intention until Palantir reaches uh, fifteen dollars per share. I don't cut my hair, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wedding changed my plans. Yeah, exactly. Me, but you were ready. You were ready to wait five years before cutting your hair. That's the risk of investing. <laughs> <laughs> Adobe went back to. 2019 prices almost three years it did three years a reverse is that just uh, an overreaction from the market like i need to know what like how, how much of a bubble was it adobe was probably 600 dollars uh, november 21 and now we're talking 300 dollars. we're getting talking about getting cut in half and a monster company with monster amounts of cash well there was a bubble component i wouldn't call uh, adobe a bubble but the valuation clearly was uh, was rich. And uh, as we said before, you can have a great company, a fortress, but if you overpay for it, uh, you are exposed to the risk of the multiple contracting. Because uh, as we always said, say, the, the return we get is the combination of the business growth uh, plus or minus the multiple uh, expansion or contraction. When you pay an initial multiple that is already very rich, you are more exposed uh, to the risk of uh, the multiple to contract. And if you have uh, a business uh, slowing down and the multiple contracting, then you get very hit. What generally happens is uh, when something uh, good happens for the business, then the business accelerates. You have uh, both the business growth uh, and people start incorporating the idea that uh, this growth that is boosting our uh, revenue, our free cash flow, is set to continue in the future. Because we tend, uh, as humans, uh, to think linearly. We see a trend and we project this trend to keep going on. Then, therefore, the valuations get very rich. I don't remember the, uh, the multiples of Adobe, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they were like 50, uh, 60%, uh, 50, 60 times every cash flow. Why? Because you have a very steady company, uh, a fortress, and that is growing very uh, strongly and steadily. And uh, people want to pay a premium for that. The problem is uh, when the premium gets uh, too high and the business uh, then uh, normally slows down because you make a comparison with uh, an anomaly year, the 2020 and 21 with the lockdowns, uh, where, anom uh, where anomalies, they boost uh, too much the growth compared with uh, the regular trend. Then you see the start of the inverse trend, uh, you see a slowdown, you see the multiple contraction, and then you start uh, people seeing, uh, oh, the slowdown trend uh, is set to continue for the infinity. So probably right now we went from being uh, overexcited uh, to be over pessimistic. And uh, when there is already pessimism in the hair, and you see the company making an announcement, spending uh, 20 billion for a company that generates uh, less than 400 million revenues, implying a multiple of uh, 50 times sales. Uh, the market doesn't like it. 
because uh, basically it's like saying uh, you take uh, 20, 20 billion from the company and you throw them away. That is not really the case, uh, but that is the perception. And the market uh, didn't like it at all. And uh, that 20 billion impact became actually 30 billion. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of market cap loss? Yes. So probably right now there is an overreaction and it must be considered that the management is not stupid. The management for sure is scared that what happened with Canva, we actually both use Canva and we don't use Photoshop for the reason why they are scared. This, comp Sorry, this company, uh, Frigma, could do the same on another product Adobe has. Because if this company keeps growing so much, they could threaten the Adobe monopoly. Exactly. So, But what do you think about them overpaying then? That means the threat was real. Especially overpaying, uh, I giving so. that multiple at this time. Nobody's getting those multiples. So there was probably Especially, a serious threat. I think it was a serious, a serious threat. I don't remember right now if uh, this company is bigger than Canva, but I see comparable. The problem is that if you don't stop it until it gets too viral, that it could uh, threaten you. And how you stop the menace? You buy. And uh, if they paid so much, it means that uh, the, the founders were not willing to sell because they knew they had something valuable. I mean, when you have a company that could uh, defeat a monopoly, you definitely have uh, something very valuable. And uh, Adobe was very scared in, uh, okay, we need uh, to get this done. Consider yeah. that uh, they were uh, so uh, under pressure that they don't only paid in cash, but they pay in uh, cash, a combination of RSU and the new stocks. Yeah, wait, what does that mean though? What, what advantage, disadvantage do you have paying with the stock? Well, uh, paying with stocks uh, is, uh, has the advantage that uh, it doesn't impact uh, the free cash flow of uh, the company. Exactly. Because uh, you don't, if you, let's say you, have, you make an only uh, share per share acquisition, you issue more shares, uh, that doesn't give uh, new money unless you make it open to the market. You, but you, that's complicated. Let's say you want to buy a company, you just uh, incorporate into your business by giving a percentage of the new company that is the combination of company A plus company B. If we do that, there is no cash going out. There is only a change in ownership. The benefit of doing this is uh, you can keep growing uh, without uh, using the cash uh, to buy the company. The bad thing uh, is uh, it all depends on the price you pay. Because uh, right now, Adobe is not in a position of strength in terms of uh, stock price. Because uh, when uh, you issue shares, you sell a segment of the ownership of the company. If the valuation you have is rich, it is worth to say, okay, I pay you with something that has a lot of value, is extremely rich. And if it is extremely rich, it means that it is above the, its intrinsic value. So you, you basically uh, pay with something uh, that it, in that moment is overvalued, hoping you buy something that is undervalued or that combined with you, it can unlock much more value. That is actually what I think is the case here, because if you have a very good product and you uh, put it into a platform like Adobe, already having all the salespeople, all the, co the customers, you do what Salesforce did with Slack and its previous acquisitions. You already have all the client relationships. You just say, please uh, try also this new product. So that's for sure the game on their planning. The risk is uh, when you do a nominee like that and you pay in stocks and you pay in stocks that uh, already have been hammered uh, like 40-50%, it means that you are selling uh, an undervalued 
stock that is worth much more, but you give it to someone else. And right now they paid uh, like a nine, they paid a 50 times uh, revenues uh, by selling uh, something at nine times uh, revenues, stuff like that, which means uh, they sold uh, something that was cheap uh, to buy something yeah. that was uh, very expensive. O so overall yeah. for the company, it doesn't really change. Actually, for sure, it will benefit in the long run. For shareholders, that is the worst. It's very different from what happened with AMD and Xilinx. AMD launched the acquisition of Xilinx in a moment where they were both expensive. They were both at the peak. And if you pay expensive for expensive, you are fine. <laughs> yeah, because basically everything is uh, is matched. AMD sells uh, uh, expensive shares. Xilinx uh, sells uh, and get expensive shares. And uh, what's interesting right now is that uh, AMD is buybacking shares uh, at basically half of the price of uh, of Yemeni. So basically, it's like uh, they merged. They they combine the combined company gets much more free cash flow. Ceilings had a lot of uh, cash in the bank account. With that cash combined with the cash uh, AMD group is producing, plus the cash AMD already had in the balance sheet, they are now by backing the shares at half of the price. Basically, they are getting the, the acquisition at, a, at an implicit uh, negative price. That yeah. was a master uh, operation. In this case, uh, the, there is a damage for the equity holders. In the case of AMD, yeah. basically you have a company that by merging another company automatically increases its value because it was an accretive uh, operation. A simple trick uh, from uh, M&A when uh, you merge uh, a company uh, by doing share per share is looking at the PE of uh, the two companies. What you would like to, want to have is uh, selling a high multiple to get a lower multiple because that automatically increases the EPS. It's called an accretive acquisition. And in the case of AMD, it was uh, this way. And with Xilinx having uh, a lot of cash, higher margins, basically the combined AMD was much better than uh, AM the starting AMD. While generally in uh, the m as uh, the big company has uh, worse financials than uh, the... So, sorry, uh, generally it's the other way around that uh, the... Um, the big company having good financials get uh, diluted uh, in terms of EPS by buying the, the company that is weaker with expectations that we make it better. So Adobe should have been ready to do this when the stock was obviously much higher. With their stock, their own yes. stock was much higher. Did they miss it? Were they slow then on, on that? Well, I would say yes for the reason that... Uh, they basically bought this uh, company at a multiple that uh, is uh, crazy, especially considering that the valuations uh, in the tech space uh, already got halved. And uh, what I tweet today is, uh, imagine this design company with uh, less than 400 uh, revenues is priced more than Panantir actually saving uh, <laughs> uh, countries uh, from... Uh, uh, invasions, producing uh, not uh, 400 revenues, annualized revenues, uh, but uh, 500 million in free cash flow. Yeah. And Palantir is worth less. So, or some, or Palantir is extremely undervalued, or this company is uh, <laughs> extremely overvalued, or maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe they really, I, I well, just from our discussion, what I'm thinking now is that it seems like Adobe was late to this. They should have done this earlier. They should have acted earlier. And they really took these guys as a big threat at this point. It's the only thing that I could understand from our conversation, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I can't believe that they just woke up now. Like, why wasn't Figma on their radar for the last two years, at least? So I don't know the company, really. I don't even know how old it is. 
I'm sure it's at least it's like, like from it's 2012. Sure at least on the radio, right? Well. Oh my gosh, ten years. So then, I think yeah, they underestimated you know. how big it could have become, uh, like uh, Canva. You know, it's yeah. that kind of uh, company that if it gets viral, because, uh, for instance, uh, you have all the influencers uh, all, um, telling you how to create a YouTube uh, channel and all of them tell you, okay, look at Canva. It's stupid to use a Photoshop that is extremely expensive. It's extremely complicated uh, to make a thumbnail. Uh, use Canva. You are actually happy to buy uh, Canva Premium for $10 uh, because it's just simple rather than paying $15 for something that is extremely more complicated to use, uh, like uh, Photoshop. For professional users, Photoshop is, uh, is like God, you can't have it. But for the regular users, just wanted to make a YouTube thumbnail, uh, to make a meme, uh, there is no point in having Photoshop. And uh, if it is, it is just absurd if you think that you can buy uh, 10, like if you, like many people pay $10 to have like a basic product, but works fine when with uh, 15 you can have uh, the pro uh, the pro product the problem is uh, if this uh, simple product gets viral in, like uh, canva that really erodes your margins so i see that as a desperate move uh, in a, the way that they underestimated they used the cash inappropriately because uh, in my opinion, rather than uh, saying, okay, we our stock is so down, but we don't care, we issue more shares to finance the acquisition, they should have uh, not done the buyback and they were quite aggressive with the buybacks. I don't know the precise numbers uh, because I I lost them, but uh, I, I, rem I remember I tracked the buyback for Adobe and they were quite aggressive. Uh, and uh, for sure, if they didn't buy back to all the way up and go way down, uh, they would have uh, much more cash to deploy for this acquisition. And uh, if you have uh, much cash, you can issue debt uh, to cover it. But what's the problem? If you, if you use all the cash to buy back, you have uh, a thin cash position. If you want to finance, uh, an acquisition, you are not in a good situation to issue debt. So you, when uh, you make buyback, you need to be very careful in knowing that you are using that cash into something that will be much more valuable in the future and you are not killing uh, other uh, potential opportunities to increase the business, the business value. If you do something like that, basically you are destroying value for the shareholders rather than creating it. Like oh, wow. Intel, if they bought uh, shares for uh, five years, uh, they issued dividend, and now they have uh, to basically issue debt uh, <laughs> to pay the dividend, uh, meanwhile paying for the foundries. I mean, that's stupid. That's bad management. So even the top CFOs for these companies, they don't have all the answers. Well, uh, they make the job and uh, they make the best they can. Uh, I would say... It is extremely important uh, you pay attention to the moves uh, of the CFO because the CFO is that guy that is not directly involved uh, with uh, the regular business operations, but uh, it's like the investment manager of uh, the cash. And uh, by how the CFO manages uh, these decisions, the wealth of the shareholders can be heavily impacted. For instance, uh, it's absolutely fine that Apple buybacks this aggressively because Apple is in a kind of fortress position. They can issue debt uh, to buy whatever company they want, uh, to finance the buyback they want, uh, and still pay very, very little interest. But in the case of Adobe, they were in a very strong position, but if they had to issue even shares to complete uh, an acquisition rather than uh, issuing bonds, it means uh, that... Uh, they didn't have enough uh, cash uh, to safely issue debt uh, at a good yield because there's a priority. And uh, if you think of it, it's no different from uh, when uh, you, you act as an investor. 
First, you look at your bank account. Uh, do I have the money to purchase this uh, real estate? Yes, okay, I can pay cash. I don't want to elaborate. If you have a really uh, a lot of cash, you can do that. Maybe it's not convenient for taxes, but you can do that, right? If the cash is not enough, what you do, you put some cash and you take on debt the residual amount uh, to complete the purchase. If you are a company, you use the cash, you use the debt. After you can't uh, issue more debt, what you do, you issue, issue shares. Because uh, it's like I cover with uh, the means I can a part of the deal. With the parts I can't cover, I give you something that is valuable, but that is not uh, in the cash account uh, of the company because the company doesn't have it. So that is the red flag I see. Uh, but very now much, you're uh, making the mark. So the market's reaction was correct. Because usually we, we like to say that the market overreacts. I think it was over. We are reacted in the price because for a 20 billion acquisition, let's say they paid all in, all in stocks. You are basically giving 20 billion to another company generating no revenues because 400 million revenues compared with the size of Adobe is basically nothing. So the, the impact was 20 billion. But uh, there is a, a rationale behind it saying, uh, okay, that's probably a bad move from the management. Uh, maybe the company they're acquiring is, uh, is good. The acquisition from an industrial standpoint makes sense. Uh, but if they came to this deal, that is not actually a good deal. Maybe there is something not good in the management. This is what triggered the overreaction which is an overreaction in terms of uh, the real impact on the company. But uh, that uh, raised uh, questions on, uh, hey, management, what the hell are you doing? You buy back shares uh, at a much higher price, and now you yeah. need to issue shares. Uh, now the valuations are at uh, multi-year low. There is nothing yeah. worse to shareholders than company issuing uh, new shares at a high, uh, at, a low, at a low multiple. Yeah. Conversely, when uh, Tesla issued shares uh, to finance uh, the gigafactories, that was uh, creating value for shareholders because basically Tesla, what it was doing was uh, you have uh, the company that is uh, overpriced under any metric. What you do, you sell things that are extremely expensive compared with the fundamental value of what you have. It's like selling air for gold, okay? Because uh, if yeah. your company is not worth that much, you, you sell reputation, you sell a piece of paper that is not really worth much in that moment to get cash. With that cash, you build the gigafactories. And with gigafactories, you create a lot of real value that in the future then creates uh, a lot of value for the shares. As everything in finance, Everything depends on the price you pay and or in this case, in the car, in the, at the price you issue uh, the tools. So there is no, never the, okay, this is good, this is bad. Uh, because yeah. uh, even issuing shares, uh, if you make it at a price that is uh, creating value for shareholders because you are uh, selling uh, overvalued things, uh, yeah. you are creating value for the remaining shareholders. So even buying shares, even if a company is doing buybacks, but at a high price or high multiple, maybe it's not even the greatest thing. Absolutely. That's, that's uh, an example of uh, the CFO destroying value for shareholders. Because yeah. uh, by, with buybacks, the company invests capital into something yeah. that was yeah. expected to be worth more in the future. But if uh, the company uh, business deteriorates, the, those shares that were bought become worth uh, nothing. He's draining, he's buying something on the balance sheet. He's using the cash that he has, cash on hand, to buy something expensive. Basically, anything you buy, exactly. if it's a car or a stock or a house or a watch, you want to get a good deal on it. That's why I said before, uh, judging the movements from the CFO is extremely important uh, to understand uh, if uh, the company acts uh, as a uh, conservative investor, a prudent investor, or is reckless? Yeah. 
But we in don't the case know the of AMD? Story, but we don't know the whole story there. Like, we don't know. Maybe, I don't know what to say with Figma. Like, could we just assume that? Like, okay, based on our conversation, Adobe seems like they didn't do the greatest thing. But maybe there's more to the story. Like, did we really just solve the mystery well, now? Well, there are always uh, more details to the story. What we said uh, are true, is true for general principles, but you have to consider that uh, when you make uh, these kind of M&As, especially when you are buying not only a manufacturing uh, capacity, but you're buying a team, you may want to pay in shares uh, so that you ensure 100% that uh, the people inside the company you buy stay in the company for five years, let's say that. So, and to do that, you don't pay cash, you pay with shares. What we said is true as a general principles, so that when you make an acquisition, is effectively as doing an investment. If you overpay, you create a damage to, to the existing shareholders. So to make a good acquisition, when especially when you pay in stocks, uh, you want your stock to be in a moment that is uh, expensive uh, so that uh, you give uh, a little percentage of ownership uh, to get something that uh, is more valuable. Yeah. Because if your shares uh, are uh, worth uh, very little in terms of multiples, it means that to give the same amount of uh, value in dollars, you need to, to give... Uh, a lot of shares, therefore a lot of, of uh, percentage of uh, the company to get to acquire the other company. This is true for general principles and uh, it's always better to pay in cash unless uh, you have uh, that dynamic of uh, selling uh, an expensive share to get a cheap one. But there are some details that must be considered like uh, when you are talking about tech companies uh, and not uh, just uh, capacity manufacturing, uh, like for industrial companies, uh, the team becomes uh, much more important because uh, you basically have a company that is a small team with a product that is just scaled. So for instance, here, I guess uh, Adobe didn't only want to have the company, but was uh, extremely interested in I want uh, the management team that drove this company from nothing uh, to become a competitor yeah. to us. Yeah. And they exactly. want to keep them locked uh, for at least, uh, let's say, five years so that I can learn. So they that, might, have uh, they some, can they might have had grow. some geniuses on, on that team that they just acquired. I mean, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's a good thing. So like we long term, with, uh, the volunteer spots, you know, like. It's a benefit of, of dealing with other companies. There's maybe a bunch of talent that now you're reaching out to. I mean, uh, you see, there are, there are always uh, the financial considerations that are strict uh, to the numbers. And uh, there are many of these uh, choices that seem uh, very bad. But uh, if we get the full context, uh, maybe there is much more value than uh, the price uh, it is paid. Yeah, uh, exactly. So... What we said before is uh, is true because uh, paying uh, 50 times revenues uh, in this market uh, is clearly, clearly overpaying. But uh, if uh, there are some strategical reasoning behind it, both in terms of people and uh, the potential synergies of uh, scaling the platform to all Adobe's clients, that could actually create a much more value than the 20 billion ah, exactly. lost. And, and I'll end it with this. The, I heard the CEO on CNBC today, he said that he's thinking in decades, which is, which is a great line. If it's true, you know, anybody could say that. It sounds cool, but he did say it. I, Everybody's I a long term investor, <laughs> like also in Palantir. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a, but plus that guy he's like sixty years old or more, you know. So it's funny to hear him say that he's thinking in decades. I mean, how much time does this guy have left, anyways? But well, also Buffett uh, thinks long term, and he's uh, yeah, yeah, exactly there ninety. Maybe maybe that's why he's so old, Buffett. He lives so long because when you think in decades, you're planning for it. Like, <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna be there, so uh, there's nowhere to go. I have to, I have to, I have to live out. I have a mission. 
<laughs> yeah, you have to. On that, Arnie, let's uh, let's end it there. Thanks so much for your time. We'll we'll chat soon for sure. Thank you, Emma. All See right. you soon. Take, take care, Arnie. Ciao, ciao.